You paid me a small amount at each of my half yearly visits to town. I did. <laughs> For the parents of a boy named Docker, who unfortunately, who unfortunately died at to the boy called. I remember very well, sir. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mrs. Wills was as harsh <laughs> to that boy as if he were own. The attention that was bestowed upon that boy at the time of his illness, dry toast and warm tea offered him every night and morning when he couldn't swallow. A candle in his room on the very night he died. The best dictionary sent up to him every night to lay his head upon. I don't regret it though. It's a pleasant thing to reflect that one did one's duty by him. This is one of our parents, sir, who is kind enough to compliment me on the course of education and of dinner to the boys on. Which is situated, sir, at a delightful little village of to the boys near Greta Bridge in Yorkshire, where you saw born and book going. Wash, wash with pocket money. Yes, what? We know that, so it's in the advertisement. Indeed, it is in the advertisement. And in the matter of fact, besides, I am bound to assure you, and I am proud of having the opportunity of assuring you that I consider Mr. Spears a gentleman, highly virtuous, exemplary, well-educated, conducted, and I make no doubt of it. No doubt of it. <coughs> Suppose we come to business now. By all means, never postpone business is the very first lesson we teach our commercial pupils at Do the Boys Hall. Well, it is brief enough, soon broached, and I hope easily concluded. You advertise for an assistant, sir? Precisely, sir. And you really want one? Certainly. You're here. My nephew, Hidalus, was from school with everything he learned there fermenting in his head, but nothing fermenting in his pockets. <laughs> he is just the man you want. I'm afraid your nephew won't suit me, sir. Yes, he will. I know better. Don't be downcast, sir. You will be teaching all the young noblemen into the boys' hall in less than a week's time. Unless this gentleman here is more obstinate than I take him to be. I fear, sir, that you object to my youth and to my not being a master of arts in the absence of a college degree is an objection. Look here, sir, I'll put this matter in two light in a matter of two seconds. If you will have the goodness. This is a boy, or a youth, or a lad, or a young man or a poverty boy, or whatever you like to call him. That, I see. So do I. <coughs> His father is dead. He is wholly ignorant of the world, has no resources whatever, and wants something to do. I recommended him to this splendid establishment of yours, as an opening which will lead him to fortune. He turns it to proper account. Do you see that, sir? <coughs> Let me have two more words with you. The boy, Docker, died when? Just after Christmas. Exactly. And how many years was it before I was informed of his death? Yours, Mr. Nickleby? Yours, Mr. Squeers. Your uncle's recommendation has done it, Mr. Nickleby. <laughs> <laughs> then, I am to be accepted? I think that can be safely assumed. You don't you, Mr. Squeers? Your argument, sir, was very convincing. <laughs> at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, the coach leaves. Be here at quarter before. Don't be late.
That's taken care of the new boys and the horses. Cold, are you, Nikobe? Rather so, I must say. Well, I don't find fault in that. It's been a long journey in this weather. So, this is to the boys' walk, sir. Mm. The fact is, it ain't a hall. Indeed, we call it a hall up in London because it sounds better. But they don't know it by that name in these parts. A man may call his house an island if he likes. There's no act of parliament against that, I believe. I believe not, sir. <coughs> Come and tie these horses up, will you? Be quick! Do you hear? Mm. Cold. Long way from London. Very cold. Very long way. Mike! Where the devil is that boy? Very often, let me tell you. 
I should like to know how I could ever get on without them. <coughs>
Perhaps you would like to see them more in town? Well, here they come. The Lord is off to the boys' hall. Get this table out of your Boys, I want you to welcome Mr. Nickleby, the son of a rich gentleman newly come with me from London. Help with your upbringing and moral education. Say hello nicely, boys. Good evening, Mr. Nickleby. You've also got four new play fellows. <laughs> you can show them where everything is. In the parlor. You see, Mr. Nickleby, that what these boys lack in the uh, material comfort, we make up for them in love and charity. Love and charity, Mr. Knuckleboy. Love and charity. <laughs> Uh, 
Nickleby, my love. Nickleby, my love. You do appreciate that the boys love their food. Don't you, boys? <laughs> Indeed. It would seem that they don't really enjoy the food. Perhaps they don't get enough. You are right, Mr. Knuckle Boy, and plenty to be needed to practice. You will observe, my dear sir, the look of anticipation on his little face. And what are they to eat? Milk, Mr. Knuckle Boy. Milk and what? Milk and water, sir. And two pennies for half a litre. I should think that's more than enough for them. But I only require so as to. <laughs> Yes, witches! <laughs> Think of the many beggars and orphans on the streets that would be glad of this little boys. A shocking thing on there is, Mr. Knuckle Boy. <coughs> I love my little brutes. When she says one, the first boy may take a drink. And when she says two, the next boy may. And so on until the last. Are you ready? <coughs> Has 
nothing we heard about me? Why? Because you've been here all these years and no money paid after the first six months. Not a notice taken, not a clue to be got as to who he belongs to. It's a pretty sort of thing that I should have to float and beat a fellow like him and never wish to get a penny for it. How's the chicken, Sumayaji? Tender as a lamb, my love. Yeah. And how did you see me? It was prime meat, that. I got an extra large piece on top, it's for. For? Not for the boy? No. On purpose for you, in case you should come home. You don't think I'd make a mistake at that? Upon my word, my dear, I didn't know what you were going to say. You needn't have worried. I'm not such a funny daddy. Boy, bring me that egg. You look somewhat disturbed, little bit. Out with it. There are no secrets here right through the boy's heart. I was merely reflecting that my needs, there are so many to go down. Needing by that, I suppose. Oh, well, let's not be hasty, my dear. So, <coughs> this is the essence of our discipline here at Do the Boys Hall. Our society is a privileged one, and our subjects will one day hold privileged positions themselves. But, before they can do that, they must learn to see it in action. That is good domestic economy. What boy? What brings you here? I brought the A, if you please, sir. Oh, so you brought the A, have you?
taught you? Are you cold? I am not cold. I am used to it. Put your shivering. Here. Put this on me. Do you remember the boy that died here? I was not here, you know. But what of him? Why, I was with him at night. And when it was all right, he cried no more for friends. He wished to come and sit with him. But began to see faces around his bed. He said he smiled and talked to him. And he died at last, lifting his head. Do you hear? Yes, I hear. Who <laughs> will talk to me in those long nights? What faces will smile on me when I die? You think you can help, but you can't. No one can find my father or mother. No, there's no one. Shh. When I look at this wretched school, I feel as unhappy as you. What? We must both say, there is always hope.